Arsenal have made some really good signings during the summer and they look pretty good going into the season so far. But one player we haven't seen is Fabio Vieira, a big money signing from Porto. He is a 22 year old Portuguese midfielder who can also play as a 10 or as a forward or a right winger or a left winger, he even drops into the left back space. I think he's a really good player, but where's he gonna fit into the Arsenal team? Well, first of all, let's have a look at what his statistics show him to be. Smarter Scout tells us that he is very, very good at progressive passing. So he's got great vision, spots a pass, can help take the play forward, and he's very useful in the final third. His carry and dribble volume is low. He doesn't take on players often. He tends to play the pass rather than try and dribble past people. Links up well. Does a lot of work out of possession. This will be something that Arsenal will have seen flagged to them when they're scouting these players. Fabio Vieira does a lot of ball recoveries and interceptions, as in he's working hard out of possession to try and win the ball back. Disrupts the opposition often. Not a lot of shots uh, or extra even ball progression, but the thing is that despite these low numbers over here and what it looks like, his amount of assists and goals is phenomenal. In the Portuguese top division last season, depending on where you look for your statistics, he's counted as having uh, 14 assists and six goals from who scored. And I think it's 11 assists from FB Ref. So different counting for different bits and pieces. He takes the corners for them. He's got a really great delivery. Uh, just a really clever player, and he's such a clever player that he can play all over the pitch. Here's where he played last season for Porto. Right wing, right midfield, centre mid, left back, striker, uh, central attacking midfielder. He says he's number 10. Mikel Arteta has said that one of the reasons they're really excited to have signed him is that he's very creative and very versatile, and that kind of proves it. I can prove it more. These stills are from one game in the fourth minute. Here is Fabio Vieira deep as a playmaker, as the number six essentially, even though he started or listed in the team sheet as being a striker. This is him here. Then, here he is somewhere else, leading the press, that's in there. So he's gone from where he was before, three minutes ago, to being over here, driving in to force the goalkeeper to keep it long. The, uh, the ball gets punted up the pitch, Porto win the ball back. That's because of the high press, that's why his defensive numbers are so high. And then we move over here, he's on the left wing, and here he hits a really good low cross in that um, they score from at the back post. His delivery is superb, his final ball is, uh, yeah, he's been really fun to watch on highlights. Now, if you go to here, oh, here he is on the right wing, the right midfield, chasing a player back to try and win the ball back. Another reason his defensive numbers are high. Another example of him being able to play multiple positions. And then we go over to here, and this is the last one I've got for you. Here he is at left back, just dropping in. This is the same game, half an hour in the same game. He's played every single position around here. Just floats in and out of uh, where he needs to be to make sure that the team is covered where it needs to be. Very tactically clever. Now what he lacks is physicality. He's not very strong, uh, can bounce off the ball. That'll be something he has to work on to play in the Premier League. Uh, and he's admitted himself that's one of his weaknesses. So that's something you need to look for and maybe he's why he hasn't broken into the Porto first team exactly. Like he hasn't been a first choice all last season. Knows assists and goals, very impressive numbers, but they're from a lot of substitute appearances, not always starts. So where does he go into Arsenal? What does, where does he fit in? Well, first of all, it's a bit of money, but you get a player who you can uh, back up Saka with. You get a player who can actually play the Jesus role, swapping and uh, dovetailing with Martinelli up here. You can also play him as a replacement for Odegaard when he needs a break or to come on late in the game to give him a substitute and give him a bit of rest. You could probably play him in midfield too as well if you want. Um, he's not a left back, but he does go in these positions. Or more likely, if you want to get Odegaard and Vieira in the same team, and this will take a long time, I would have thought maybe a few months in the season before we really see him do this, you'd replace Xhaka as that free eight. So suddenly what you've got, much like the kind of Man City teams that we've grown used to watching, you've got Vieira and Odegaard both moving as free eights in these half spaces. Odegaard linking very much with Saka, Martinelli being over here, Jesus here. And again, the really useful thing about having all these players is all of them are flexible and can play multiple positions. So what you'll see is Saka swapping with Odegaard or linking with him, Jesus swapping with Martinelli, which they do a lot, Vieira swapping with Martinelli. And it's in these positions that Vieira is absolutely at his best because his vision and his decision making when he's playing the final pass is what makes me think he's a really good player. So you see loads of examples of him playing these sorts of through balls or runners to get into. Does it all the time. He spots passes, he spreads the play well, but it's always very clever passes in the final third. He waits for defenders to commit before threading that ball through. And it's a very obvious thing to thread between a centre back or if you want to thread a ball from deeper between a full back and a centre back. Very obvious, hard to execute. Vieira's good at it. And especially a specific thing that I really like about him is in some of the assists and pass before the pass that you see him make when you watch a lot of uh, 
Fabio Vieira play is that when he's in these sort of positions here, it's like a Barcelona kind of pass you see under Guardiola back in the day, or maybe under Man City now even, is that when you're playing as a team who's back in a block and they're trying to restrict all the space between lines especially, it's very hard to be able to create anything here. So what Arsenal are doing this season at the moment that might change when they get Kieran Tierney back and Tommy Asu, is they're playing a mid centre midfielder and they've got the two fullbacks come inside to invert like this. The centre backs push right up, very aggressive, very aggressive like that. And then what you might have is Gabriel Jesus trying to get in behind with Martinelli. Again, they're all rotating positions and swapping with each other. But say you have Martinelli, Vieira and Zinchenko in this, this little section here. Very common, you'll see this multiple times with Man City and Barcelona in, in the past, where they're looking at this little triangle. But then what the idea is, is that he might go into here, into here, and then Martinelli's going to try and make this run in behind. You're just trying to keep the defence guessing where you're going to go ping short passes around, keep rotating positions, and then Vieira does this thing where he waits, wait a pass and execution is perfect and scoops the ball over the top for a player to get in behind to get a chance at goal. There's loads of examples of him doing this if you look through all of his highlights. Uh, but yeah, absolutely at his best when he comes into this final third here. If he can bulk up, be a bit stronger, and just, just have more core strength, better balance, he'll not be as easy to knock off the ball, be a really good prospect for Arsenal long term. Uh, he's a bit of a late bloomer, he's 22, he's just coming into playing his real game now, but some of the stuff he does is phenomenal. Uh, I think he could be a really, really special player for Arsenal in the long term, and I'm excited to see what he does in the short. And he's back in the Arsenal squad now, so look out for that. And something else to look out for is the subscribe button, which is down below me, and the like button. Click that too. I'm going to give you a minute to do that. And you've done it now, thank you very much. Have a lovely time, bye! If you like this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. The Athletic is where the Ralph Rang Nick to Manchester United story broke, where a team of journalists have provided unrivaled coverage of Newcastle United's new ownership and where dedicated writers cover every Premier League team, no matter their place in the table. And you can try it free now for 30 days.